Hello and welcome to the physics topic sound, lesson one, sound waves. We are going to take a look at a variety of different sounds. We're also going to look at the properties of sound waves um, and what they do. And we're going to look at the frequency and pitch of sound as well. And we'll look at some diagrams to represent that. That's why we've got these images here, because all of these images have a different pitch, very, very different pitch to the human ear. Um, so it's worth having a think about which ones you think have a low pitch, um, which ones you think have a high pitch, and which ones you think have too high a pitch for the human auditory range to be able to detect, because there's definitely some of those as well. Right, so to have a look at sound waves, a look at this trace, you need to know that sound is a longitudinal wave and the wave has vibrations that are parallel to the direction of the wave and the energy transfer is also parallel to those vibrations. As well as sound being a longitudinal wave, the slinky spring, a slinky spring is a really good example of a longitudinal wave and you can use it to uh, make it look like this image here, um, showing the compressions where it groups together. Now, the red arrow there is showing you that the vibrations are in the same direction the wave is travelling, and that's really important. The vibrations are key to these sound waves, and that's because the sound waves are caused by objects vibrating. Um, as that object vibrates, those vibrations are passed on through a medium. Now, that can be air, water, glass, but it does need a medium for those vibrations to be passed through. And then those areas of compressions, I mean, compression that I mentioned earlier, they're where the vibrations are being passed on through the vibrations of particles. So if there are no particles present, uh, the sound wave can't be passed on and that ha that occurs in a vacuum so if there is a vacuum where there are no particles present then the the sound can't travel through it and that is why you can't hear sound in space okay a couple of other properties and features that you need to know about sound waves is that um they can be reflected a little bit like light and water waves um they can also be absorbed. Now, the image of the cave here is to show and remind you that if they're reflected, um, it can be known as an echo. And you will hear it, you'll hear that repetition of hello, 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 as you're shouting into a space like that. Or as you, if you walk, um, if you walk under a bridge, a tunnel-like bridge, you can create that echo. That's because those sound waves are reflecting off the walls around you um, and that's when you hear it as an echo. However, if you fill a room with the soft furnishings, like that image there, the cushions, the soft comfy sofa, uh, the curtains, assume there are carpets as well, um, those materials will absorb the sound. So it makes it much quieter, it dulls the sound down, you don't hear the echo. OK, and that's important to remember. It's also noticeable if ever you move house and you walk into those empty rooms before you've put everything in, it sounds really echoey. And that's because there aren't the soft furnishings there. Right, so you've got to have a think of the speed of sound. You need to know that uh, how fast sound travels depends on the medium it travels through. The speed of sound is much slower than the speed of light. OK. Uh, the more particles that are present, so the faster the sound waves travel. That means in a more dense material, the faster the sound will travel. So, sound will travel faster through a solid than it would a liquid. It will also travel faster through a liquid than it would a gas. Some key points there you need to know. Right. The final bit you need to be aware of for these sound waves are the frequency and pitch of the waves. So I mentioned that right at the beginning when I showed you the picture, uh, the slide with the, the bats, um, what else did it have on it? The truck, the lion, uh, the drum and um, the ultrasound. 
So frequency is linked to pitch. The frequency of a sound wave, which is the number of waves in one second, is a measure of how high pitched a sound is. So the more frequent, the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. And frequency is measured in the units of Hertz, capital H, lowercase z. Um, another, just wanted to introduce you to the idea of wavelength as well. And the wavelength is the distance from the crest of one wave to the crest of another. So one full rotation, so from the top of one to the top of the other. And remember, we, we learned a few lessons back that the, the it, uh, Remember that we learn in the waves unit that the crest of the wave is the top of the wave. OK, so the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. And that's because there are more vibrations. So the more vibrations they are, there are the higher the frequency and pitch. So we're talking really, really high pitched, unbearable sounds, really high pitched sounds we as humans can't detect. Right. This uh, image here. Of, wavelength, of waves has a medium frequency, so the sound will have a medium pitch. And we're going to liken that to a busy street that you'd be out walking in. Nothing too high, nothing too low and dull. And then the last one here, um, much less frequent, has a lower frequency, so the pitch will be low. So that is more like a rumbling truck. So much lower, much duller. Remember, the range in which you can hear is dependent on the organism, which we will talk about in um, another lesson in the future. Right, we've covered quite a lot there. You may need to watch all that again because it was a lot of information to take in. And before you do, have a look at the worksheet and see what you need to know and what you need to refresh on. And then have a go at completing the worksheet and see how you get on. And we'll see you again soon for lesson two.